coming out of the West Coast with it, Mo? Yeah. I mean, what was that like coming out of Cali with it, man? So for me, man, I'm I'm born and raised in Compton, California, right? Okay. So, okay. Straight you know, DJ Quick. Yeah. Okay. But that but when when quick pre quick when it was when it was when Dre was DJing in the clubs <laughs> like Compton, it was Com- King T, you know what I mean, uh uh Ice T, he ain't for Compton, but Ice T was really the first to put a West Mix Master Spade, Tidy yeah. T, it was like that Compton. Like pre, uh, like I lived the straight out of the the after police straight yeah. out of Compton. So I'm I'm there, you know, uh, and it was just like what people see. Mm. It was just like my life, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. so, I wasn't really, you know, I tried to find refuge. Like we lived on this side. I grew up in Spooktown, Compton, which is a crip neighborhood, right? Okay. But then Pops and Pops' entire family, all my uncles and everything, they grew up in Hollywood. They bloods, you know mm. what I'm saying? So I'm on, the, I'm on, you know, both sides of the fence yeah. because to go visit Pops, I got to walk through different neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and getting over here with the red team, and then I'm also <laughs> over here. Now I'm also, I'm living over here with, with the, the blue, blue team. team. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm saying? It's like, that was, that was just Compton. And so moms, you know, like, we went through our shit. We went through, like, being homeless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, moms went through her adversity. And we was trying to find a way out. Then we moved to this place called, we moved to this place called Rialto, mm-hmm. right? And Rialto was, like, the suburbs. It's, like, College Park, I guess. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be, like, College Park. It'd be, like, Kennesaw, I guess. Mm-hmm. It'd be, like, Kennesaw, moving your family to Kennesaw. Okay. But the only thing is, is, Everybody in L.A. County got this idea of moving their kids and their family to Kennesaw to move them away from. <laughs> so now you got a bunch of niggas who ain't supposed to be around each other. They all now in this exactly. small ass area. So you got like people from L.A. hoods, like 60s, Hoovers, S.A.s, yeah. all these people. And now they in this small area. Now that shit was worse Dig Compton. Damn. Oh yeah. I, first time I I never got jacked in Compton. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I got jacked. I'm in high school. Yeah, I'm in high school. I'm in I'm in high school and uh you know we had this shit called open campus. Like it's, yeah. it's different from y'all open campus, like it's for the bad kids. Now open our open campus was like you can at lunchtime you can leave and go eat whatever the hell you want to eat yeah. and come as long as you back. Before that next period. Yeah. So we at this, it's this little shopping center. <laughs> the homies out there, I'm coming out the store. I see the homies like giving they giving they shit up. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, Lok, start the homies out. Yeah. The nigga, I got a Detroit Pistons uh starter jacket on. Just got it too. Oh my God. And he said, hey man. I was like, man, start the homies out. That nigga was like, what? Nigga, give me my jacket. I was like, man, I ain't giving you shit. That nigga said, Kuh. I was like, I know that nigga. Let me get my homework up out of here. Let me get my homework up out of here, Lord. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah, so I'm like, let me get my homework up out of here. So, you know, I, I give up my jacket and shit. So, but it was cool because, like, it wasn't cool, but I met so many people. And, like, became friends with so many different homies and got ex- exposed to, like, because if you're in Compton, you know what I mean, depending on what neighborhood you grew up in, that's all you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you only know Compton is a city of 12-mile radius, yeah. max. But you also relegated to the hood you know and the hood your, your partners is cool with. That's right. So you can't, you know, you're not over here, over here. And we damn sure didn't go way over to L.A. or none of that. Yeah. We stayed over here. Yeah. So moving out there just exposed me to so much shit. But it also exposed me to more adversity, but then it opened my eyes to like I had to find refuge mm. and that's how I start end up getting into DJing and all that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, break that down. When you picked up them turntables though, Mo, what was that like when you said, Okay, every every get the uh, artist started? So let me tell you, right? We used to have this thing called, in L.A., it was called K-Day Mix Masters. Yeah. So on Friday night at the radio station, every Friday night at 630, yeah. they just let the DJs go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it was like uh, DJ, like Battle Cat, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Bob Cat, who DJ, who, 
who DJ for LL, yeah. Dr. Dre, uh, just a bunch of uh, DJ Aladdin, DJ Pooh, all these big time producers and shit. Now they was they started out as K they mix masters. Yeah, and every Friday you just like nigga, wherever you at, you got to get somewhere where this radio work. Put that tape in and listen to these these cats just go. So you listening to that gent, like you listening to these cats. I'm like, damn, this is what I want to do. You know mm. what I'm saying? And uh, for me, my homeboy, my homeboy uh, Kenichi, he had turns. He had a he had one turntable and a mixer. And uh, man, I don't know what it is, but he just let. He was like, man, I see you really love music and shit. And I'm like, man, I want to DJ. I I said. Two toe up ass like house stereos and and make mixes on there. <laughs> he he gave me his mixer and the turntable, and my Mexican homie gave me a turntable. He had a broken one. He gave it to me. Mm-hmm. And I fixed it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. Then my other homie gave me a mixer. He said, "Man, I start making mixes." Yeah. My other partner gave me this mix, this Easy E mixer. Ooh. He was like, "Man, Easy had this mixer. He gave it to me. <laughs> he gave me so Come my on. first real mixer was an Easy E was a mixer from Easy E." Oh and it had God. like um, they used to call it, it was a Jazzy Jeff mixer. It was like this little pyramid joint. Mm-hmm. Shit was like from Radio Shack. But, yeah, you know that's all I had. So I was like, nigga, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. So I start, you know, me just making little mixes or whatever, mm-hmm. and take them to school. Yeah, yeah. Niggas was like, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know, I was a bummy nigga because I ain't had no bread. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and I was too young to get a job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We lived in the projects, and so. I started making these mixes, five, 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 but then I started making the name for myself. Yeah. Then my partner, Big, J- my partner Jerry, this nigga was like, he was my age, but that nigga had that cake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, was, he was, he was in the streets. Jerry's like, look, man, I got all this shit in the garage. I don't use it. That nigga pulled up. He had, the, he had an El Camino and some gold ones. <laughs> he pulled up. Was like, I got some shit in the back. Nigga had the turntables. Oh. It was on from there. I was like, yeah. now I'm at Hall. I'm rocking all the house parties and all that shit. How did you find yourself at Priority, though? Man, so it's crazy because I, I got with Priority through. I started, you know, doing, D, doing DJ. Mm-hmm. And then I met, like, through my, through my big homie, Big Ant. He had this dude, Paperboy, mm-hmm. made the Diddy. But this before, like, the Diddy came out, I got with Pate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, a guy would pay. Shit ended up selling three million copies. You know what I'm saying? God damn. Yeah, so we on tour. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. me and Pate, we on tour. But I also doubled as a rapper. Ah, and I had it be okay. me and my homies. Like, I went to school. They, you know what I'm saying? We had this crew called Triple H. That's at right. At school, you know what I'm saying? We were not no rappers, but we was like, back then at school, we was just like a click of niggas. Who was from different hoods that was all homies. That's right. We had a Triple H, it was called Hitting Hoes Hard. Ah! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, back then your crew had to have, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So we was like the threes. So I'm DJing, but I'm also like fake, you know what I'm saying? The other two homies, one of them was a dancer, and my other, my best friend Snoop, that nigga was the first nigga like rapping. Mm. So he rapping, I'm doing the beats, but I'm also like a, I'm like, nigga, I'm start rhyming too. Yeah, I got some shit to say. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was like, even though I'm hood, but I'm also listening to like East Coast shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm getting all the records in the record pool. So I'm listening, I'm amazed by these niggas and their lyrics yeah. and shit. So I'm rapping like an East Coast nigga. That's what all the homies said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So me, him, my other partner, we created a rap group. Yeah. Triple H. So I'm going on tour with Pate, come back. We in the studio, we recording, mm-hmm. but I ain't never want to just be a rapper. I'm like, this shit take too much time. I don't want to come <laughs> in here, rap this shit over and over, all this bullshit. And now these, and then you got to think we L.A., so niggas on some street shit. Yeah, but yeah. I'm rapping like this. I'm rapping like I'm rapping <laughs> like, like, boom like rock, yeah, like boot camp, <laughs> like buckshot shorty and niggas <laughs> like that. So niggas is like, man, fuck that shit. Well, like, they keep trying to make me change my shit. But the crazy thing is, the funniest shit. And I ain't saying they stole it or none of that shit. Yeah. But like all our songs, if you listen to like early Snoop and Dog Pound shit before them, all our songs, like we had a song called Sagging. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, 
it was it we used like a parliament shit. Yeah. Like then we had something about the liquor. It was like something about the liquor. It got <laughs> into my head. We was like songs like that. Yeah. And then my partners, you know what I'm saying? So when I'm on tour, I come back off tour. Them niggas had a rap. Like yeah. now they they a rap crew without me. Mm. I'm just gonna be the DJ. Yeah. So them niggas end up getting a like a deal with priority. But during the in that Again, I say I was a bummy nigga. So, yeah. you know, bummy niggas, when you growing up, bummy niggas became the biggest roasters. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you got to roast. You got to get them out there. You know yeah, yeah. So, since I had, a, I had to like, okay, yeah. my, my roasting skills <laughs> was A1, right? I feel you. So, we had the video. So, them niggas signed a priority. And we had the video shoot. Mm-hmm. And I'm just roasting everybody at the shoot. Yeah. So, like. Brian Turner, the owner of Priority, and this, and uh, I forgot the publicist's name. They like, look, we gotta kick you off the set, like, cause <laughs> God damn, you fucking up. They like, who is this? They like, this our DJ. Yeah. But everybody coming in, all the other DJs knew me. Yeah. So that nigga was like, damn. Oh, I see. You you know all the DJs. I'm like, yeah. The niggas was like, you want a job? Damn. Like on the street town, I'm like man, I'm fucking up. <laughs> man, I'm nah, you know what I'm saying? They end up giving me a job working record pools and shit. Yeah. And um, one of the other homies, he had ended up moving out here, and uh, he was like, man, nigga, you gotta leave from out there. Like, come fuck with Atlanta. I had never even, I never been to Atlanta, none of that shit. Right. What? I'm like, man, I ain't fuck around no Atlanta shit. Like, yeah. that shit. To me, no disrespect to the A now. Just say what this, you feel. I was like, man, this the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it I was, was you know what I'm saying? Man, man, nigga, I ain't yeah. coming to no country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, ain't this that? That's the country. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, nah, man, just come out here. At that time, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling um, my boss at the time, Super Dave, like, I'm gonna go to Atlanta. He was like, all right, look, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, one of the people out out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna hook you up where they just do street team for a couple weeks. We'll shoot you some paper. This was um, Arlinda Garrett was the, oh, was yeah. the original shit. Yeah. Then. So I came out here, linked with Arlinda, started doing street team. And shit, nigga, that nigga asked me, he was like, when you coming back home? As a joke, I'm like, I'm not. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this shit was a joke. I moved yeah. to Atlanta as really a joke. I was supposed to be for two weeks. And I was like, nigga, I ain't never going back. What was it about the city that grabbed hold of your ass, man, though? Man, that shit was so crazy, man. You came here first. Like, motherfucker spoke to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, because I'm coming from the West, and nigga speaking to you, I'm just staring like, yeah. What is this nigga looking at? Like, exactly. You know, so they, it's that. And then I'm seeing other black people, like, niggas with like Benzes, yeah. cars, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> black people try this? Like, this, this like, yeah. Damn. And then it was just so cheap. Yeah. At the time, I'm like, man, gas was like 79 cents. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, this, the crazy shit is, I remember calling home like, nigga, you ain't going to believe this. They like, what? I said, nigga, they let you pump your gas first and then pay. <laughs> Niggas was like, hell no. Nah. I'm like, dog, I ain't coming back home. <laughs> then the girls, nigga, the, the girls were so fine. Come on, you now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hardest oh, thing. Hell no. I ain't going back home. And let me tell you the kicker. Uh, you remember Atlanta Live? Yeah. So of course I'm at Priority, but you know at Priority at the time it was the hottest shit out. Mm. No limit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm going to the club with records. All the No Limit shit. Oh. I remember, man. I met this cat Jarrell Allen. He had this company midnight brought. They had a he he ran a uh, Atlanta Live. I go to Atlanta Live just to drop records off. That yeah. Like, man, you want to come in? He let me in. I go in this motherfucking nigga. I seen some shit I never thought I'd see. I'm seeing like Grant Hill, uh, Heavy, all these stars just walk. It wasn't no VIP. Nigga just walking around. I'm like, oh, this this, this shit crazy. <laughs> then out of nowhere, I didn't even realize because it wasn't no social media. Out of nowhere, the lights go off. Nigga hit the stage. Guess who hit the fucking stage? Who? Prince, nigga. <laughs> oh, damn. I was like, that nigga, uh, what's that movie with Eddie Murphy? Like, honey, I'm never coming home. That was me. Bottom <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> Yeah. I'm like, never coming home. I call the homies like, oh, no, 
never, they like, what about all your clothes and shit? <laughs> that, nigga. I'm getting new ones. I'm never coming home. Nigga. I was like, oh, it's on. Oh, my it God. It was on. I end up staying.